Now that I've thoroughly outlined the origins of woke ideology and shown in great detail why it is such a harmful belief system, it is time to talk about what can be done about it. First, once more, I want to encourage everyone to take a stand and not be afraid. I know what it's like to fear repercussions for speaking out against the woke mob. As a matter of fact, since January, I have missed countless hours of sleep and have been editing this whole series while hardly being able to function. I've had crippling anxiety that has made this whole process extremely difficult. But it turns out that my fears have been for nothing. I have received overwhelmingly positive support and countless comments and private messages from people encouraging me and telling me they want to help. So regardless of the fear that you may have about any potential backlash you might face from speaking out against the woke cult, just know you're likely to get a lot of positive feedback and you may even get more positive reactions than negative ones. I hope the following advice proves helpful in your fight against woke ideology. So often students are presented as like hostages to the school system and students have to know that they have rights. They have rights against compelled speech in this country. You cannot be forced to stand in front of your classmates and declare yourself an oppressor, borrowing a page from the struggle sessions of the Chinese Communist Cultural Revolution. That's a violation of compelled speech. You have a right to privacy. So they can't just send you surveys like they've been sending students you know, here in Fairfax County, Virginia, about their ideas on equity and their ideas about, you know, implicit bias. They cannot force you to admit to a racism that you didn't even know that you had until they all of a sudden told you that you had it. You know, so you have the right of, against compelled speech. You have a right to privacy. You have a right to have a balanced viewpoint. Every school district in this country has policies in place about controversial ideas. Critical race theory is a controversial idea. It cannot be presented to you as a student without a balance of ideas. And so you have to look at the policies. You have to attend board meetings now and really be aware that they're coming after your minds. And your mind is a precious thing. Your mind is so precious and so you can't just hand it over. You cannot allow them to rent space in your mind, you know, free of charge or ever. Like you, this is your mind and you have to simply take ownership over the stuff that comes in and question, question, question. The first thing that any young person should know about anything is you're certainly not alone. If you have questions, you should have questions and other people have questions as well. And if you speak up with your questions, you'll discover that other people have got the same ones. That's the first thing, to say what troubles you, to say what occurs to you and seems wrong to you. Your intuitions are very likely to be proved right, not all the time, but very often. And if you intuit, think that there's something bad going on, you should ask questions. The second thing is you should especially ask questions of people who present life as being exceptionally straightforward and simple, easy to understand. And you should know that the people presenting the world in this simplistic light are misleading you. And if you want to live the most fulfilling and truthful life you can, you should listen as little as possible to people misleading you about the alleged simplicity of the life you're gonna live. And the third thing is to embrace the complexity and to embrace as wide a variety of ideas as you can. Listen to as wide a variety of ideas as possible. Read as widely as possible. Try to understand how other people are thinking. Just like we are the targets of marketing campaigns by Coca-Cola, Nike, the Gap, we are now the targets of a marketing campaign by an ideology that's called critical race theory. And instead of just, you know, absorbing it without understanding that it's coming from this industry, follow the money, look at who publishes books, just like 
we're supposed to use a critical lens on everything that we learn, apply it to these ideas too. Apply it to Black Lives Matter, critical race theory, any concept of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and know that these aren't just like values. These are elements of an industry. They, it's, there's multi-million dollars being pumped into supporting these industries. And just like you know, you know that you're going to be bombarded when you walk through a shopping mall, that's what's happening now as you hear your morning announcement, as you read your school newspaper, as you get an email from your principal. All of those are now becoming the platforms for these ideas of critical race theory. And, and just have your eyes wide open, just like you do about everything in this world. If I had a child who was being taught that they were innately evil at their school, I'd withdraw the child from the school immediately. Immediately. This is child abuse. Profound child abuse. These people are molesting the minds of young people. And they're setting them up for a life of confusion and unhappiness and bitterness. If you discover that your child is being taught that they are evil, take them away from the school. Give the school a warning, perhaps, first, and then take them out. Do anything else than leave them in the hands of child abusers. If you absolutely have to stay, you have no other choice, find other people who are equally concerned, organise and try to make it stop. Go to the school and tell them that what they're doing is not remotely satisfactory for the parents. If you have pushback, and there can be pushback on this, then you have to explain and lay out just how wicked this is. If it were the case that schools today in America were teaching children that black children are intrinsically evil, I would expect every parent in America to speak up. Same thing goes the other way around. So make that argument. Tell your teachers, tell the teachers of your children, you will not join them in the re-racialization of this society. Tell them you will not agree to your child being brought up a racist in the name of anti-racism. You have nothing to fear in this. Everything's on your side everything historically and you'll be vindicated by history on this so parents should have total confidence they should arm themselves with the best arguments for sure but they should feel no fear in saying to the people in charge of their children's education that they will not have their children turned into racist automatons not in any direction well parents can call me for one thing because i'm going to chase every situation down. Parents should challenge the schools. Parents should file Freedom of Information Act requests. They should know that they can get access to every bit of curriculum and every contract that goes through these public schools because ultimately it's taxpayer dollars that have funded this. And we have a right to know what is being taught to our children. Parents must know that it's better to have the conversations with their children with open minds and open hearts also so that they can guide them with common sense and wisdom. And they have to read, like we have to read the material. That's why I buy all these books that are being put forward by the critical race theory propagandists because I want to know their propaganda. And so we have to be schooled in their ideology so we can challenge their ideology and know it and know the touchstones, right? Like if our children are repeating those talking points, then we know where they're coming from. And it's not easy. Like, trust me, who wants to have these kind of difficult conversations with our children? But they're being forced on us in a way that is, you know, uncomfortable, for sure, to borrow their word. But we have to be ready to have the uncomfortable conversations. And the most uncomfortable conversation today is 
the one about challenging critical race theory. So if you want to dare to have uncomfortable conversations, then have the conversation about critical race theory. If I were the parent of a teenager who had fallen into some of this, I think the best thing to do is to encourage them to read contrary voices. Read and listen to black writers who don't peddle racial prejudice in any direction. Listen to the remarkable women who this society has produced in the last two generations, as much as ever before, who are remarkable not because they're women, but they're just remarkable. And listen to the people who are walking in the other direction. I think of it like the salmon in the river. It's worth focusing on the flow of the river, but it's particularly worth focusing on the things that go upstream, things that go against the flow. So I would say, don't listen to the people who tell you not to go near that bad text, not to go near that bad person, not to listen to that bad person. Listen to them, find out what they've got to say. You may find that they're right. And if they're wrong, you'll have much better arguments and you'll understand yourself better and you'll understand your arguments better. And anyone who says this idea must be kept away because that just reveals that what they believe and what they advocate is probably untrue because it can't withstand a moment's criticism. For parents whose children have already succumbed to woke ideology, I highly recommend sharing resources with them like videos, podcasts, and articles from people like Coleman Hughes, Aisha Akambi, John McWhorter and Glenn Lowry, Christina Huff Summers, Benjamin Boyce, Jordan Peterson, and others. I'd also encourage parents to sit their kids down to talk about how some of their beliefs may come from activists in our university system, and that these beliefs are largely fabricated. It's good to do research before you engage in these topics, so read cynical theories and other sources ahead of time so you can best understand this ideology and how to explain it to your kids. I'd also encourage you to watch this series, especially the first two episodes, together with your kids and ask them what they think of it. For more on how to communicate effectively, I recommend the book How to Have Impossible Conversations by Peter Boghossian and James Lindsay, as well as Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. It's good to remember that most people who believe in woke ideology do so because they think it's the morally correct position to take. So especially with kids, we have to approach the conversations with care and understanding. If they do not believe this, if they are being forced to do this, I think they probably have to work at a different company. If the people at the top of their company truly believe this, A, or are doing it because they're so intimidated not to, those are both reasons to leave the company. I mean, if you don't believe this and you believe you're only doing this because you're going to, because you have to, I don't see how that's helping you, your company, or the world to profess some, some things that you don't believe in at all. Now, I understand people have children and they have families and they have things to support, but you really have to think about it. I mean, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't stay in that situation. I, I couldn't trust it. I couldn't trust that that company would make good decisions, period, if they're willing to cave because they're afraid. There are various ways to do this from the soft end to the harder end. If your boss tells you that there are books you must read in order to remain in their employment, the softer end, the softest end, is to say, that's interesting. If we're involved in an exchange of ideas, I will read your book and Here's a book that I think you should read and give them something by any of the many and growing number of writers of every imaginable background and identity character trait who speak against this nonsense. If your uh, boss tells you that you should read the huckster Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility, ask your boss if they've ever read Thomas Sowell. If they say, that you should read somebody like Roxanne Gay on women then. Ask them if they've ever read a book by Christina Hoff Summers. If they say you must uh, do implicit bias training, 
Ask your boss if they know that the whole thing has been proven to be not worth the paper it's written on by two out of the three people whose work it's based on. Two of the three have said publicly many times that it is not fit to be used in this fashion. It cannot do what it claims to do. But another thing is this, and here's one of the tougher ones we might do, might advocate. I'm your employee. That doesn't give you the right to rewire my brain. I'm not here in Mao's China or in Pol Pot's Cambodia. I'm an American. And in America, we still have freedom of thought. Freedom of thought does not include bosses trying to tinker with the brains and the thoughts of free American citizens. I won't do it. You can't make me do it. The church leaders who become woke, it's, um, it's quite easy, actually. You might ask them what Jesus Christ had to say about intersectionality. If uh, intersectionality was as true as people say it is, then surely our Lord and Saviour would have had a word or two about it. So it's most curious that uh, members of the clerical class would decide that actually what Jesus really meant was things to do with things he never talked about. <laughs> the priests and clergy and others who go down this route are really people who no longer believe in their own faith and haven't quite come to terms with that fact yet. The Christian faith calls people to follow Jesus, take up your cross and follow him, to die and to suffer, if necessary, in his name, and to expect uh, redemption and indeed salvation in the afterlife. That's got absolutely zero to do with the works of Kimberly Crenshaw, Robin DiAngelo, or any of the other fraudsters of our time. So, it is, I'm very confident, a sign that a priest or a clergyman is simply no longer believing in the teachings of Jesus, that they would end up repeating the same banal claims of our current era. Elsewhere, it's uh, an attempt to bully people or to prove you're on the right side. And I think we should have contempt for these people. I think we should have contempt for people in positions of power who have swiftly switched to a new ethical framework in order to ask the mobs of the era to pass them by and leave them alone. I think people should fight their corner, argue their corner. I don't think they should just give in, give in to the mob, give in to the crowd. And I think that people have a lot of questions they should ask these figures who've swallowed the whole woke thing wholesale. I think people should be intensely suspicious of them. Business leaders and others who pretend that their corporations primarily and principally exist in order to further a social justice agenda are almost certainly trying to cover up something they've done wrong. A lot of people in authority have decided to use intersectionalism, social justice and all of the other crap of the era as a smokescreen to cover over other things they want to get away with. And we shouldn't let them get away with it. That's one of the most important things in the era, to realize that the people who've switched in no time at all from one ethical system to another have switched because they have something to hide. Many people have been fooled by woke ideology and started to believe in it because they think it's the morally appropriate thing to do. These people deserve compassion as we try to help them understand the problems of woke morality and get them to think more deeply about what they believe and why. Then there are others who use woke ideology as a tool to achieve power, and we have to see through these people and not allow them to wield that power over us. Ultimately, in order for things to change and for society to get back on track, we need to stop being afraid. Yes, it's possible we might lose some friends or have to change jobs or find a different church or school, but is life really worth living if we're living in fear and not being genuine? Are we really afraid to lose friends who aren't actually supportive of us because we have different opinions? Is it really worth keeping a job that drains your soul? And should we really keep a community wherein we have to be dishonest and hide our true selves? 
I think the world would benefit from more honesty, more sincerity, and more brave people who take a stand against the corrupting and corrosive ideas that have been pushed on us by the woke cult. We need to unite in opposition. If you feel like you're alone, start seeking like-minded people, organize, group together, and find support so that if there is any backlash or any problems that come your way for speaking out against woke ideology, you have a support system in place. I encourage everyone to stand up and do whatever is within their means to fight this ideology so we can get back to caring about the most important things in life. Thank you.